Hello, this is James, and you're watching our first episode of the relaunch of Lingo Tips, which will now be uh, video tips on how to get over certain issues you may be experiencing or facing while using your computer, rather than the formerly the written articles. So I hope you guys enjoy the new format. Uh, today, for our first Lingo Tip, uh, we're actually going to be talking about desktop disorder. <laughs> or what you may be more familiar with as a desktop clutter. Um, and basically, as you can see from this Windows user's desktop, uh, it's very easy for our desktop to get you know filled with all sorts of random junk, especially if you don't have a downloads folder and you're you're throwing it uh, you're throwing everything you save from the internet uh, onto your desktop. Um, but whether you have a downloads folder or not, the desktop folder, it will behoove you to keep this a lot more cleaned up and organized, as well as your downloads folder if you have one, um, for the reasons we're going to talk about today. Um, and it's not just because I'm a type A person, and when I see that, it looks kind of crazy to me. Um, maybe you feel like, oh, I'm totally capable of navigating through this, and, and I like having my files all on the desktop where I can see them. Um, I'm going to try to give you some tips today that, that will help you continue to enjoy the ease of use of, of, of having a desktop, um, but without facing the performance and storage issues. Uh, before we get into that though, we have to ask ourselves, what is the desktop? So uh, the desktop was a feature that was introduced to computing with the rise of the graphical user interface or GUI. Originally computers were all command line tools. You, you typed commands in and you got textual responses back. Um, some applications might have a, an animation component or a, or a visual component, but the actual operating system itself, uh, you were just manipulating the computer with the keyboard. With the rise of the graphical user interface, uh, we started having this great tool called the mouse, and the mouse needed a, a palette that we could manipulate and work on, especially when all of your apps are closed, um, what's the default background? That became known as the desktop. Um, and you can see here from this picture of the old Mac OS classic desktop, uh, you'd have uh, the, this, uh, the folder there with all the icons in it, that's not part of the desktop. The calculator, that's an application, it's not part of the desktop. Um, but the trash can and the repeating Mac OS image that's in blue and the hard drive and other icons you see there on the right, that's the desktop. Um, and in essence, it's basically a folder or directory like any other, but it's a special folder, kind of the way the trash can is a special folder, that the system does a few extra things with. And one of those is visually presenting it underneath any open applications that you might have. Um, it's a great place to drop short-term items. If you, you, know, you picked up a picture off the internet and you're going to use it someplace, you can download it to the desktop or drag it to the desktop. Um, you, someone emailed you an attachment and you want to send it to someone else. The, the desktops, that's what it's for. It's a short-term place. Uh, th there are some long-term items you might want to put in there, like maybe you always play World of Warcraft, so you want to have uh, a shortcut or link to your application there. But generally, you want to keep the amount of stuff you have on your desktop limited. Um, and the first reason and the longest reason is because of performance issues. Um, this is an example of a Ubuntu, a early Ubuntu desktop, a very clean desktop, as most desktops should be. <laughs> if you have an app that you want to access, rather than creating a link and putting it on your desktop, you could easily put it on the launcher bar, which was to the left, this bar on the left here in this version of Ubuntu. For Mac OS, you got the dock at the bottom of the screen by default, and with Windows, you have the start bar. Um, other items like media, still, you might not have a great place for them. The reason why you don't want to put them on your desktop for performance, not just because visually it's going to be hard to navigate and, and quickly get to your files, but the desktop, like every folder, when a folder gets opened, the computer that you're working on um, has a lot of resources it has to deal with. And depending on what's in that folder, if you open an empty folder, there's not any resources. If you open a folder full of video files, then the computer needs to get ready to play those video files. Um, and what it does is it's going to move those files from cold storage or your hard drive, and it's going to put them into active memory 
or your you know your active storage. So that that's you have a much more limited amount of RAM or active memory than you do of cold storage, um, and swapping data in and out of that can be kind of annoying and painful. Um, this is especially compounded by the fact that the desktop folder is essentially always open. So um, I'm going to actually exit my PowerPoint here to show you my desktop for a little bit. My desktop here is pretty clean, pretty clean little desktop. But um, inside this short-term items folder, right, um, I've got some stuff in here. So when I open this footage folder, all of these videos now have to be loaded into the, the active memory. Originally, it, this was done so that uh, it would make it easier and quicker for when you double-clicked one of these to open. But um, Ubuntu and Mac and uh, later on everyone started following this trend. Um, the icons themselves are now actually capable of doing what we call a preview. So, so notice as I bring my mouse over the app, you see the little play button up here. I can actually play the footage here in the icon. So all of these videos now are in my active memory. Now if I back out, those, that, that, those resources are deallocated. I no longer need to worry about them. But I can't back out or close my desktop folder. So if I had all of these, fo these uh, video files on my desktop, every time I use my computer, whenever the desktop was there present, I was going to be wasting resources, valuable system utilities to be able to have those, those previews ready. Um, and so, and it's not only in the icons, you can also, so like get a space bar preview in Mac OS, right? Um, you don't want to do that if, if you're running on a, a computer that's a few years old, a, a top of the line computer, brand new, you're probably okay. But after a year or two, that thing's going to start feeling its age. And especially uh, with people using Linux and Macs, you have a lot longer lifespan for your devices. Um, having a bunch of media on your desktop is going to really slow things down and uh, make them kind of sluggish. Now, the previously that was the the only reason uh, to keep your desktop clean besides aesthetics and the fact that it's going to be more efficient and easier for you to access your stuff if you're you're going through it all. But let's say you have a brand new computer. Uh, you want to throw some media files and keep them a bunch of video files on your desktop. You're not too worried about the performance, but maybe you start seeing this message pop up, this warning. iCloud storage is full. Photos, videos, documents, and data are no longer updating. Um, and what's really annoying about this error is there's no cancel button. There's no way to escape this without either upgrading and paying Apple for more iCloud storage or managing the current storage you have, which takes time to go through and, and delete things and make space. Um, but the reason why most people see this is because their desktops are too cluttered. And that's because uh, with the recent invention of the cloud or cloud technology, uh, Apple has shifted your desktop folder, your documents folder, and your downloads folder up to the cloud. Um, so just like when you lose your iPhone, hopefully your contacts and your photos and important documents have been getting backed up to the cloud, Apple wants to make sure that that happens uh, with your laptop or with your iMac or your, your tower. Uh, unfortunately though, you know, the, the, what we toss in our desktop might be incredibly important or it might be something we've used once three years ago, depending on how well we keep our things organized and clean. And you know, my computer right now that I'm running on has a small, relatively small hard drive, 128 gigabytes, but com it's that's just massive compared to what's available on the cloud. Uh, cloud typically, I think you get five gigabytes for free. So you want to kind of, you know, be really efficient with what you're throwing up on the cloud and keeping it up there. And unfortunately, um, having everything that you toss onto your desktop, especially if you're not keeping it organized and it's cluttered and you're not deleting things that you no longer need, uh, that's going to eat up iCloud storage space very quickly. And we can actually get around this um, using a pretty quick fix that still allows you to keep most of the efficiency and simplicity of uh, using your desktop. And so what I do is uh, I've created an alias or a shortcut here. Let me show you that. Show you that. So rather than throwing stuff on my desktop, I've created a folder 
to store on my desktop. And in the past, uh, if, uh, in some of my previous tips, I've called it cleanup or, or temp folder, whatever you want to name it, the name doesn't matter, but by creating a folder and throwing your items in there, all of a sudden the need to have all those previews ready to go, to have all that media ready to go, vanishes. Okay, so no more performance issues. However, if we look at the preview for short-term items, I got 16 gigs in my short-term items. So I'm still gonna keep getting that error with iCloud warning, except I've done an extra step here. And you, you, you might notice this little black arrow here. Um, this black arrow indicates that there's not a real folder there. That's what we call in the Mac world an alias uh, PC, you probably heard it called a shortcut. Um, if you're a command line user, there's soft links and hard links. This is a soft link. So in actuality, when I go to get info, this sucker is only 608 bytes, which is an incredibly tiny, tiny amount of space. I'm not really using any, uh, the amount of space I'm using on my cloud is negligible, right? It's four kilobytes on a disk because it has to round up. Uh, instead, what I've done is I've actually thrown my short-term items folder into the root of my desktop. So right here, I've got the stuff you'd normally expect, application, system, users, library, and then I've got my short-term items. And I've just created an alias or a copy or a shortcut, right? Make an alias. I'm just gonna require some permissions. And now I can rename it whatever I want and drag it to the desktop. Now, once this sucker is on the desktop, every time, and I can actually delete the original alias I made because I copied it, and that's the beauty about aliases, we're not actually affecting the data in that folder, but every time I open these items or temp, I'm gonna open that short-term items folder. Now, on my desktop, I'm storing 608 bytes, but I'm I have quick and easy access to 15 gigs of space in my short-term items or my temp items. Um, and if I throw random media in here, it doesn't matter. Until I open that folder, it's not going to be affecting any of my performance. And it's not going to be affecting my cloud issues. So that's my quick fix. Um, I hope you guys uh, can appreciate it. I know it's not quite as simple as dragging stuff to your desktop, but it's if you drag to your desktop, you can drag it right up to the short-term items and just kind of throw stuff in there. Still think it's a good idea to clean that out because you want to kind of, you know, stay on top of your stuff. But uh, it's a simple way to keep from seeing that, you know, iCloud storage flow and definitely better than paying Apple extra money for, you know, the 20 gig option, which is just going to fill up uh, again until you learn to keep your desktop uh, from being disorderly. I hope that's uh, been helpful again. And uh, this is James Lingo signing out.